I'm going to be showing you how you can take a whole bunch of lovely tomatoes and make your own tomato homemade tomato sauce and tomato powder. Stay tuned. I'm Corey. Welcome to my channel, This and That. If you are new here, thank you so much for taking the time to check out this video. And thank you, as always, to my returning subscribers. So in today's video, I'm going to be sharing, I did a test batch of pasta sauce. I have been growing and saving a ton of Amish paste tomatoes, and I had quite a big batch of them that were ripe and needed to be used. I also have eight gallon bags in my freezer full of tomatoes, most of them Amish paste. But I wanted to do a test batch because this is the first time I've ever made pasta sauce. And I have to say, I am really thrilled with the results. I ended up with seven 24 ounce jars of pasta sauce. And my husband liked it so much that we had an open jar of all these organic pasta sauce in the refrigerator and he chose mine over that. And I said, well, why didn't you finish the rest of the Aldi sauce? And he said, because I like yours better. That was the right answer. I have a smart husband. So I'm going to share in this video how I took a whole bunch of Amis Paste tomatoes and I made some delicious sauce and then how I also took the skins from the tomatoes and I made some tomato powder which you can use in different recipes. So let's get into this video. So as I mentioned, I have a bunch of Amish paste tomatoes and the ones that were in the colander and, and in this bowl were all the ones that I used to make seven 24 ounce jars of pasta sauce. Now the reason I got so much more sauce out of these compared to a regular tomato is these are Amish paste and these are a very fleshy tomato. I'm going to core and quarter all of these tomatoes and you'll see what I mean when I cut into these that there's not a lot of juice and not a lot of seeds. It is mostly the flesh of the tomato. Therefore, it gives you a lot more sauce and it gives you a lot more pulp without all of that extra water. Now, when I boil these down, they will have some water, of course, but there'll be a lot less water to boil off than you would have from regular tomatoes. And there are a couple of regular tomatoes. The one I just cut was a Better Boy tomato. I did grow some of those as well, and we have an overabundance, even though it is November, and I am still picking tomatoes in New England, which is absolutely insane. But listen, we're gonna go with it. So this is what helped me get another test batch going of tomato sauce. So I'm going to core all of these tomatoes and quarter them so that way they will boil a bit easier because I wanna soften the skin so that will be easier for my food mill to take the skins and seeds out for me. Now that I've cored and quartered all my tomatoes, I am dumping them into a large thick bottom stock pot that I'm going to boil the tomatoes on the stove. I did add some water at the bottom, just a small amount so that the tomatoes did not scorch on the bottom of the pan, which is very, very important. Unless you feel like scrubbing your pans like crazy. Here I'm just checking the skin to see if the tomato was softened enough for the skin to come off. I was going to try to peel these myself before putting them into the food mill, which you can see here, and I did peel some off, but it was a little difficult. I know it's a lot easier to peel the skins off if you freeze your tomatoes. It comes right off. I did that last year with just making some regular tomato sauce, but it was a little difficult to take the skins off most of these, so I ended up just putting them all into the food mill 
and the food mill was able to take the pulp and the juice, which is what I really want, and separated the seeds and the skins. Now some people, they will leave the skins and leave the seeds in and they'll use an immersion blender. We don't like that. We do not like having any seeds in our tomato sauce. And we also have some friends that cannot have tomato seeds. And if they come to our house, we wanna to try to make sure that we can keep as many seeds as possible out of our tomato sauce that we can. So that's why I chose to use the food mill instead. It's not a perfect method. You will find some little seeds, but I did strain it again to get most of them out and they were really, really minuscule pieces. So I really enjoy using my food mill instead of using the immersion blender, but please use anything that works easy for you. So I put 16 cups of sauce into a pan to cook while I go over and start chopping my onion and mincing some garlic which I'm going to saute in a pan with some avocado oil. Here I'm just going to add a quarter of a cup of avocado oil. You can use any oil of your choice. The recipe that I am following from Michelle over at More Than Farmers calls for avocado oil, which we also use in our house. So you can use whatever oil works for you. And here I'm going to add the onions and the garlic and I'm gonna soften these so that way I can add them to my sauce that is simmering on the stove. My sauce is simmering very nicely and is starting to boil off some of the extra water that is in the sauce and my onions and garlic are almost done softening and soon I'm going to add those to the pot to give it some nice rich flavor.
Here I'm going to add about two tablespoons of oregano. We like oregano in our sauce, so I did end up going in later and adding another tablespoon to it just to get the flavor that we like. I'm trying to base the sauce a little onto the Aldi organic sauce that we like to buy because it's pretty similar. I'm also adding some basil. Next I'm adding some Redmond Real Salt. As you can see, I'm adding a super small amount of salt into this. We do not like really salty foods, and I feel like I'd rather start small, and I can always add more later. But if I add too much, I can't take it out. I'm now adding a 15 ounce can of tomato paste, and I'm taking some hot sauce from the pan so that way I can soften the tomato paste. I don't want to just take the whole can and dump it into the sauce because it will be hard to soften the sauce. It'll just be one giant lump in the pan. So softening it and adding a little bit at a time into the saucepan works really well. You can try it the other way but I've just found it end up being more work for me. So as you can see, I've already started to go back and add some more salt into this because it was definitely not salty enough. So I add a little bit more and I will end up adding a little bit more later on, but I want the sauce to continue to cook down and see how the flavor develops. But this is very important to make sure you taste test your sauce as you're creating it because everyone likes their sauce a little bit different. So the way that I'm doing it is not exactly the same as the recipe I am following. The recipe calls for sugar, and we do not like sugar in our pasta sauce. We like it in our pizza sauce, and I have made some pizza sauce already, but I don't put it into my pasta sauce. You can see here how thick the sauce has now gotten just with me adding that can of tomato sauce into it. I'm also adding some powdered carrot greens. So this is the tops of the carrots and I dehydrate them and I powder them and then I'm adding it into the pasta sauce because it's just a little bit extra nutrients and you don't taste it in the sauce at all. After tasting my sauce for a while and getting it to exactly how we liked it, it was time to start pouring it into jars so I could can it. I am going to be very honest here that I am using Aldi pasta jars because the 24 ounce size is perfect for our family. Now reusing jars is not really something that is considered safe canning, it is considered rebel canning, so please only do this if you feel comfortable. I would recommend that if you are new to canning or you are very, very much on following the book exactly, that you do not use jars that have already been used already. 
I feel comfortable using these so I've used them before for something else and I'm going to water bath these just as I would a regular recipe. The only difference is that I've turned the lug covers really tight on these when I decided to water bath them. Seven of these. Now this is considered rubble canning so I highly suggest you do your own research and if you are not comfortable reusing jars with lug lids please don't use ball lids. I use these and I'm comfortable using them. All of mine did seal, every single one. I have a seventh jar, but I purposely didn't water bath that one. I water bath these for 40 minutes and that one went right in the fridge because we're gonna eat it right away. So this is what I ended up with. This was my test batch. I have eight gallon bags full of frozen tomatoes that I'm gonna do after the new year. After taking the skins out that I wanted, this was all that was left. This is, was it for waste. So I could peel a few more skins out of here, but really this is it. Seeds and a little bit of hard pulp. So I'm dehydrating my skins in a Nesco dehydrator. You can find one of these on Amazon. I'll link it below. I found mine at a thrift store. If you can find one at a thrift store, go for it. Mine was 15 bucks. I have this set at 135 and I have my skins spread out on a few trays so that they will dry quickly and they'll be ready for me to powder. So this is only a few hours later. Because the skins are so thin, they dehydrate really fast. I think this was only about four hours and they were done and ready to go. So now that I have a bunch of nice dried crispy tomato skins, I am going to take my little personal blender. I'm using this blade here because I find that it does the best job of making what is as close to a powder as possible. And I'm going to powder these tomato skins and use these in recipes. They work great in a beef stew mix. They work great. I make a kielbasa and rice and it's a tomato based rice and instead of having, having to add tomato paste or tomato sauce or ketchup to the rice to give it some of that tomato flavor, I'll be able to use some of this. You can also use tomato powder to make tomato paste. There are so many different things you can make with it. So this was the test batch. This is the first time I've made the skins into the first time I dehydrated the skins. So I'm going to add this in here. The max fill line. There's some seeds in here that I didn't catch, but that's okay. I'll do like half and half at a time. right there. I'm going to get a jar for this to put in. So that goes to show you that up to the max line, which is about 12 ounces worth, and that's what you get. But a little bit goes a long way with this stuff. So I have a clean wide mouth pint ball jar, and I have a lug lid that has rubber on the inside, and that's where I'm going to store this. And then I will So label it. Add the last bit in. I can only imagine how many I'm gonna have after I take out eight one gallon bags worth of tomatoes. But that's a good thing because it will be something to stock away for next year. Let's 
clothes work. Some people might say, wow, that's a lot of work for just a couple of tablespoons worth, but you know, when I make something, these tomatoes do not have any chemicals on them whatsoever. I grew them pretty organically in my garden just using natural things like cotton manure and leaves and such. So now I have a little jar's worth of some of this and hopefully when I get done with the rest of my tomatoes this thing will be up to the top. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed the content, I hope you will consider liking, commenting, and subscribing. As always, my friends, stay safe and be well.